Hello ladies and welcome back to the Modern Female Podcast. I hope you're all doing well and as usual, I am so grateful to have you join me again this week. Today I'm going to kind of continue with the body-related talk. In the last couple episodes, I reiterated to you what my journey relative to my body and weight has been and how I've learned to take care of myself physically. Today we'll be approaching this topic from a more mental standpoint, and that's learning to really appreciate your body however you feel about it right now. I mentioned this last week that for myself personally, no matter whether my body has gained or lost weight, what I see in the mirror doesn't really change. This really made me think, if I view my body the same no matter how it changes, why not just appreciate it the way it is right now? At the end of the day, our bodies take us through life. We're able to do simple functions daily, and we really take that for granted. You really realize that when you have a stuffed nose and you can't breathe properly, or you sprain your ankle and you have to limp everywhere. So why not appreciate our bodies right now? I feel like our bodies are almost like plants. The more love you are able to give it, the more it can bloom. But I do understand what a challenge it is to do this. We're bombarded with so many ideas of what society thinks our bodies should look like. And at the same time, there's this movement coming out about being able to love yourself and shunning those ideas that society puts on us. It can get really, really confusing. So today I'm going to give you some tangible tips that can be applied to yourself and your surroundings in order to increase your self-love and confidence. Some of these things may be easier to do than others, and some may actually require more time, effort, and experimentation on your part, but I really think that implementing these will definitely help you. So let's start with ourselves. And this can often be the hardest part about making changes because it usually involves literally changing your thought process. A great way to rewire your thought process is making lists daily. I'm really a list person, so I know this helps me, but hear me out even if you don't care for lists. I think this is a really powerful tool because it can force you to look for positives when all you see are negatives, which is basically what we want our brain to do naturally. So... I encourage you to make a list of 10 separate physical things that you like about your body and you make this list every day. It can be on a piece of paper or it can be on the notes section of your phone. Just make sure that the list includes any feature like your hair, eyes, any body part or even any physical ability that you have like flexibility or being able to run long distances. If possible, try and change the list up every day so that you're forced to think about something new that you appreciate about yourself. I also highly recommend making a list of 10 non-physical things about yourself that you like, such as how good you are at a certain subject or that you volunteer at a charity regularly. Once again, do this daily and try to change it up every day. This non-physical list is equally if not more important because it reminds you of how valuable you are outside of your body. Social media and pop culture in general place such a huge importance on looks and so we often end up only focusing on our appearances when your appearance is not what gives you your complete value. Sure appearance is important and it can be important to keep yourself maintained but it's not 100% you. As humans, we're so much more than what we look like, so this is a practice that can really remind you of that every day. Another important practice is to take time to maintain yourself. I know these days we don't really have anywhere to go, so it feels like there's no point in shaving your legs or washing your hair. But again, this is about respecting your body. Maintaining your body in a non-weight-related way can help you feel good about yourself and also help in finding those little things to appreciate. Maybe you have really nice nails or gorgeous eyebrows, but you won't feel that way if you don't do the upkeep for them. So take the time to wash your hair, maybe even do a proper blow dry afterwards, paint your nails, do a face mask. These are all the actions that are usually brought up when we hear about self-care, but it's more about finding motivation to do them right now, especially with lockdown. And when you do these things for yourself, do them with love. Like approach it almost as if you're grooming your pet. Put that kind of feeling and care towards yourself. I know that sounds weird, but trust me, I just want you to romanticize yourself when you do it. Like it's a scene in a movie of like the the girl just falling in love with herself as she takes a bath, something like that. Okay, next, find your colors and shapes. So what I mean by this is learn how to dress for your body and your coloring. 
If you dress in a way that suits your body, getting a color that really complements your eyes and your hair, something that flatters the parts of your body that you love and arguably most importantly fits you properly, you're automatically going to look and feel more attractive. There are a ton of free sources online on the topic of body types and color theory, and I encourage you to take advantage of them. Doing these little tests at home may not be perfect. You may not find your exact colors, but it'll get you closer. Besides, these theories aren't strict. There's always room for your preference and comfort. There are some people who under certain color theories technically shouldn't wear black because it actually would make them look more pale or sickly, but they can still wear it if that's their preference. So yeah, look into your body type and your color theories, find out what works for you and adjust it as you want to. And of course, wear clothes that fit your body. I know we're really conditioned to feel like we should be wearing the tiniest size possible, but honestly, no one is looking at the size tag on your clothes except you. So if you're wearing something that fits you, it's actually going to look well fitted and the thought of whether you're too big or too small isn't going to come up in people's minds. You're just going to look well dressed. And lastly, what you can do for yourself internally to help you feel more self-love is just pretend the good old-fashioned, fake it till you make it. Pretend that you love yourself. Pretend that you love yourself that you would the way you would a best friend or even a partner. Do you ever wish that someone would give you compliments? Okay, well then give them to yourself. Do you wish someone would hype you up as you try outfits on? Okay, well hype yourself up. Yes, it's going to feel very forced at the beginning and it might even feel weird, But you'll get used to it and you'll eventually be at a place where you'll look in the mirror and automatically think, my god, I am so beautiful. Something you can do for this is have a photo shoot. I'm actually planning to do this for the first time ever because we see all these people online who literally just are a one-person show and they do their outfits, makeup, photos, editing, all of it by themselves. I think it's a really fun idea. I think it can let you be creative and have fun and you can have full control of the process. Nobody has to be involved. Nobody has to even see the end results. If you feel uncomfortable about any part of your body, well, guess what? You're going to have the creative freedom to decide whether or not to include that part of your body in the picture. I'm planning on doing this with some of my favorite clothing items in my closet, maybe some ethnic wear, and honestly, maybe even nude. Most of these pictures are literally just going to be for me. No one else is going to see them unless I show them. And I can pull them up and just admire myself anytime I feel less attractive. If you've done this before or are going to, please let me know. I want to know how that experience was for you. And if you have any suggestions on how to do it well, please leave that in the comments of my Instagram or my YouTube. Okay, so there are also some things you can change in your surroundings to help with self-love as well. The first and most important thing you can do is set boundaries. Boundaries with people in your life and otherwise. The easiest way to start this is cleaning up your social media. It's pretty openly talked about at this point that social media can be really toxic and I really think this mainly comes down to how you use it. Over the past few years, I've become so much more conscious about what I'm looking at on my feed and I really make sure that I'm looking at stuff that I genuinely enjoy or care about. If there are accounts that constantly make you feel bad about yourself, you should unfollow them. Follow people who maybe look like you so that you can see aspects of yourself being appreciated on a larger scale. I know that's difficult, especially as a bigger girl. It can be difficult to find people who look like you who are considered beautiful. Like, even for the images I use on my Instagram, it was so difficult finding beautiful, romanticized photos of bigger women. And even the plus-size models that are out there, they're still a certain type of big, if you know what I mean. Like, they're socially acceptable plus-size. I never see girls with their stomach hanging, like, kind of, like, over, which is what my body is like. So, trust me, I understand how difficult it is to find that representation online. But just do your best and find whatever is closest and what you genuinely appreciate. You can also use social media as inspiration, but just be cautious when you do this because if you're not in a mindset where you feel inspired, that content is just going to make you feel worse, that you don't look like that. Also remember that a lot of what we see online isn't even real life. It's lighting, angles, makeup, clothing, and unfortunately, a lot of the times it's also Photoshop and surgery. 
Make yourself aware of these things so that you can consume social media in a healthier way. It's also important to have boundaries with the people in your life, like friends and coworkers, but especially those who may seem even inescapable, like family members. If anyone in your life is constantly bringing up body or weight related topics, whether it has to do with you or not, you have a right to ask them to stop if you're uncomfortable with it. Regardless of whether you're having an off day and just don't want to talk about it at the time, or if you straight up never want to talk about it with a particular person, you have to let that person know. Just tell them you appreciate why they're talking about the subject, but you're not interested in having that conversation. Either they're going to respect your boundary or they won't, and you can't really control that at the end of the day. But if they don't, just try reiterating the boundary again. If you have a family member that wants to talk about weight or your body and is saying they're trying to help you, try and tell them that I appreciate the sentiment, but I'm working with healthcare professionals on this, so I have all the support I need. If someone still insists on encroaching that boundary, honestly, avoid them where possible. Trust me, I know from personal experience that with certain relations like family members, that's really, really tough. But do your best to at the very least minimize your interaction with people who aren't respectful of your wishes. Okay, so the very last tip I have for you for today is related kind of to what I had mentioned earlier. And that is to create and find things outside of your body that give you confidence and that you can be proud of. Again, we're so conditioned to focus on our appearance and we get to a point where it feels like how we look is the only thing that matters but that's not true you are valuable for every single thing you do every interest and passion that you have every hobby everything you do that makes you happy and helps you grow or develop I really encourage you to maybe try and find a cause to give to regularly or pick up a language that interests you or maybe even read about topics that are interesting to you Most importantly, allow yourself to feel proud for doing something, anything, whether that's pursuing something purely out of interest or even pursuing something for your career, like higher studies or certification, because a lot of us are raised to downplay the things that we do in life because it's considered being full of yourself. And that's actually what feeds into that feeling of having nothing to be confident about. It's okay to be confident about the things that you accomplish in life that doesn't make you an egotistical person the point is you are worth so much more than your physical body I just cannot reiterate that enough and the confidence that you can build from pursuing an interest or a career anything is really going to reflect in you you're going to feel like you can be more assertive in conversations whether they're about certain topics Or if someone just gets you started on a topic you really love, you'll literally glow from within from talking about it. I know that sounds so corny, but it's like in, you know, in books where a character is talking about something they love and their eyes sparkle. That does happen in real life. So yeah, add to your value in ways that don't have to do with just your body and use that daily list tool to remind yourself of that again and again. This is going to make you stronger and more self-assured in so many areas. I actually recently had a guy I was talking to and it was going really, really well. We were having great conversation for like two days straight and my mind just got away from me. And as usual, it's my problem. I started getting way too excited and I started having like expectations of where it could go. And then he just ghosted me. And I felt sad for like a couple hours and I let myself even like cry a little over it because, you know, I have my inner child wounds and all of that. It's okay. Uh, But yeah, then I literally, without even having to try, just started listing off all the things that make me so amazing and that I'm proud of myself for doing. And just like that, I recomposed myself and I was able to run my errands in Walmart. I'm telling you, once your mind memorizes this list, it's going to help in so many situations. So I hope at least some of this was helpful to you and that you try out some of my suggestions and are able to fall in love with yourself a little more every day. You know the whole be the main character thing? I want you to do that for yourself. Be your main character. I know today what I mentioned kind of transcended the topic of our bodies specifically, but I wanted to use this as a link into next month's topic, which is love. Yes, for the month of February, I'm going to be talking about all things love. 
uh, dating, my stories, my beliefs, sex, and I'm really determined to actually take forward the self-love idea from today and make myself my valentine for the whole month. So to do this, I've actually prepared a little self-love Feb calendar, which has already been posted to my Instagram. And starting Monday, I will be posting daily updates and inspo to my story to move through February with nothing but love for ourselves. You can be single or in a relationship to join in. And the whole month is going to include activities where you can either do them alone or even with a significant other, family or friends. If you do decide to keep up with the activities, please make sure you use the hashtag MFP Self Love Challenge and please tag me so that I can connect with you. For now, let's do our weekly Oracle card pull. I am using, as usual, the Work Your Light Oracle deck by Rebecca Campbell. And if you want to see what card I'm looking at for today, please head over to my Instagram. It's going to be in the highlights. So, this week, while I was shuffling, I had a couple cards from previous week's Fallout. Um, just from the last few weeks. They weren't mixed in with other random cards. So answer your call from last week fell out, uh, play from episode five, the awakening from episode three, and the crumbling from episode four. None of them felt right for this week intuitively, but I just thought it was interesting that those cards specifically fell out again. And if it feels right for you, I encourage you to go back and maybe re-listen to those readings. Um, Maybe it's something that you need to hear again. Anyway, so this week's card is Birthing a New Age, Birthing New Creations, Dreaming a New World into Being. And the image of the card has a woman standing um, in the middle of circles created by rocks. She's in a galactic atmosphere. These rocks are kind of up and floating. And she's in the middle and she's kind of uh, giving out off this intense light this intense energy it's literally I think coming out of her and the motion of the light looks like it's going forward and actually under this kind of like circular rock formation that she is standing on there are clouds so it's kind of like she's putting this energy forward into earth like she's above the clouds right now she's creating this energy she's transcended and she's putting that forward into the world. I think this is really, really reflective of the idea of each one of us contributes to society and to things happening in the world in our own way. And it may even be that it's two different magnitudes depending on how much energy we focus into it. But we are all capable of putting in an effort towards moving things along I mean I guess things move along and evolve anyways but we can almost influence that if we decide to put our energy into it as well and this really makes me think of the idea of what society for years has told us we should look like if we want to go back to the topic of our self-image and self-love for this week and how going back to that rhetoric of we're going to break those social norms. We're not going to let people tell us how we should love ourselves or why we should love ourselves anymore. We are just going to do what we want to do and what feels right is to appreciate ourselves just as we are and not beat ourselves up because we don't look how like heads of major corporations tell us to. I'm going to quickly just read from the book um, that comes with the deck as well for this card. And it says, often our path is exactly the way or exactly the one that we don't feel prepared for. Walk it anyway. Often what is rising feels far bigger than we could possibly hold. Be a container for it anyway. Often our creations seem to have a wild, uncontrollable consciousness of their own. Birth them anyway. Often what is ours to do is the very thing that most intimidates us. Be courageous and do it anyway. We are birthing a new age. Right now, we're in a transition period between ages. In the process of allowing the old cycle to fall away and the new to rise, like driving in the fog and trusting the road is going to appear ahead, we need to release old identities and ways that no longer serve us. 
using our intuition as a compass. You are part of a group of souls who have been incarnating at significant periods of history preparing for this exact time, dreaming a new world into being, Magdalene sisters, daughters of Isis, Essenes, priestesses, witches, mystics, healers, seers, artists, midwives, visionaries, guardians of the earth, and storytellers from times past. It is time to give permission and space for what is beckoning within to be born. We are dreaming a new world into being. So again, I just think that it is, is really driving home the idea of things are in our control, which way we want to take society. And that's not just to do with societal norms of what beauty is that's literally for everything going on in the world it is up to us the energy that we put into things and really if we all took the time to put in energy towards making change for the better in the world we really can shift into a better place as a collective i also firmly believe that having that ability to give that energy isn't going to come unless you have that self-assurance for yourself. Really having confidence in yourself, whether that's of your appearance or um, of your mental capabilities, the things that you've accomplished, that's really the root of everything that you will be able to do in life, whether that is on a small scale just for yourself, at the impact that you make in your own life and the impact you make in just your close circle or whether that's on a larger scale an impact that you can make for communities as a whole or even globally that all comes from like a strength within and I know it sounds very corny but it's really important to like essentially give from a full cup like if you do not believe in your own goodness and your own strength It's hard to see the world from that kind of optimistic point of view. And I know it is optimistic, but I think that's necessary to move things forward because pessimism, it's like I always say, negativity and pessimism isn't going to get you anywhere. Okay, I'm going to stop right there before I go way too far off into a random tangent. As always, I hope that today's message resonated with you along with this week's topic. Let me know if you have done or will start to implement any of the ideas talked about today. And if you do, please update me on any changes and how you feel. Also, please make sure to hit follow if you haven't already, both here and on my socials. All of the links can be found in the show notes. Thanks again, ladies, for joining me. And I can't wait to speak with you again next week. Bye.